In this video, we're going to have a look at the X-Particles XP Ocean Primitive. You can find it in the X-Particles Generators XP Ocean. And it generates this primitive object which uses the Tessendorf wave formula to create this ocean surface. As you can see, if we push play, you get these nice waves. Let's have a look at some of the options. First thing is type. This can be either a primitive, which is a parametric object. As you can see, we've got the handles, we can control the size, or it can be set to a deformer, and we'll come back to that one. Moving down, we have the width and the height, which is controlled by these handles, or you can do it manually with the sliders. Next is segments, and the segments is the resolution of the mesh. So if we hit ND and get our wireframe up, and we look at the width and height, we can control the resolution of this mesh. Let's get rid of the wireframe. The wave height controls the height of the wave. Time scale is the speed. So if we drop this down, you can see that the, the time scale of the wave is lowered, which controls how fast or slow the waves are generating. Put that back to default. The noise type by default is set to Tessendorf, but you can also choose either a shader or any of the other Cinema 4D noises. When you use these, it's going to use the same system that's used within the XP Wave, which is used for modifying fluids. So if we enable that, you can see it's just creating this wavy surface, and that's going to be controlled with the noise shader. Let's go back to the Tessendorf. Next option is resolution, and the resolution is actually the resolution of the map that has been generated to, con to drive the noise. You can set this higher to get more detail. So let's set it to 256 by 256, and we'll leave it at that setting. The higher you go, the slower this will happen because it's generating a really high detailed map. Next we have looping. And the looping lets you loop this noise. So if we go back to frame zero, enable looping, and it's set to a loop time of three seconds, which is what we have on our timeline. And if we hit shift G, you can see the end frame and the start frame are exactly the same. And that means our wave type will just simply infinitely loop. Let's turn that off. The ocean size is the size of the actual ocean body. So you can get smaller waves or bigger waves depending on what you need. We can have control over the smallest wave, which is the waves inside of the main waves. If we set this down to zero, you can see there's quite a lot of detail. If we set this right up, then there's no detail. These are the main big waves and the smallest waves are what happens in between the shape of the bigger waves. So let this back to default one. The choppiness controls how tight the peaks are of the waves. So you can drop that down to nothing and you can have quite bobbly waves, or you can increase it to get tighter peaks on the waves. You have to be careful because this can go over and then you can see you can just can destroy your waves. So keep this at a minimum. Ocean depth is how many smaller waves you get based on a value which is how deep the ocean is. If it's right up, there's going to be a smaller amount of choppy waves than there is if it's right down. So if you drop it down, you can see you get more and more smaller waves as the ocean floor gets shallower. Let's leave this at default. The wind speed controls exactly how many how wavy the surface is. If it's a stronger wind, there's going to be a lot more waves. As you can see, if you drop that up, it drops it down and you get less of the waves. Let's get that to default. Direction of the wind controls the direction of the wind. As you can see, you can rotate this around and it controls the direction that the waves are going to go. Let's put that back to zero. The wind alignment is also linked to the wind direction. If there's no wind alignment, then wind direction has no effect at all. It needs the alignment value of one to control the wind. And then the dampening controls 
the smaller waves bouncing back and forth inside of the bigger waves. So you can control this to get different effects on how the smaller and bigger waves interact with each other. Next we have the foam map. If we generate a foam map, we have to push stop the simulation, enable foam map, and you can see it generates this new map. If we push play, we can start tweaking the vertex map. So we have the threshold, which is the amount of generation that's going to happen. We have the decay, so that they can decay off or keep them on. And then we have smoothing options to control how smooth they want the map to be. Now let's have a look at how this works as a deformer. So we're going to go in and I'm going to turn off the foam map and we're going to get ourselves a Cinema 4D plane and we're going to change the plane and with the plane we're going to set the segments up to about 200. Okay and let's drop the ocean as a child and set the type from primitive to deformer. And now you can see we're deforming this ocean system. So you've got some options for the displacement space and what that means is we can do things like let's say we get a bend deformer like that and we'll rotate it and then we'll make it a child fit to parent and we'll just change the angle to 90 and let's increase the strength now if you notice you can see that the wave is stretching and that's because the deformer is set into local displacement space but you can change that to surface and when it's using surface you can see that it's getting the correct normals and everything's pointing as it should do and that also works if you're using something like a torus so let's say we get a torus object so, and we'll increase the segments just to get more detail. So, increase the segments like so. And we'll put the ocean as a deformer of the torus. So, if it's set to local, you can see that it's on the y axis. If you set that to surface, it then uses the surface normals. The other thing we can do is, let's go back to our plane and we'll go to the X particles menu, utilities and get the XP join and put the plane in here. Now let's put the XP ocean at the top and now what we can do is we can make copies and if you move them along you can see if we set this back to local that we're creating a perfect blend so our planes no matter where they are are going to use the correct part of the ocean map so we push play you can see now we've created this large ocean body with the four planes perfectly blending so that works for the XP ocean and again if we enable a map let's push stop it'll go on the parent object and it's using the foam map on all of the surfaces Perfect. So let's have a look at using the XP Ocean and creating a quick material setup with an object interaction. So we're going to get rid of everything. X particles, generators, XP Ocean. And let's increase the segments. Increase the map slightly. And we'll generate a foam map. So let's have a look at the foam map generation and see if it's okay. Right, let's go in and just add some basic smoothing just to get some fall off. Okay, that's good. We're happy with that. Let's create a material. So double click in the material manager and we're going to use texture colorizer. And in the colorizer, we're going to create a new gradient. So we want white at the end, which is going to be where the foam map is then some blues or bluey greens for kind of ocean colors going to a dark like so 
Okay, so we can put this on the ocean. Now, by default, you're not really going to see anything. It's just going to be black, and if you render it, it's just going to be dark. What we need to do is we need to go back into the material, colorizer, and set the texture space. We're going to use the effects vertex map, and we'll drop the vertex map into this link. And you can see it instantly updates, and we now have this wave with a basic foam map happening in real time. Let's just change this, it's a bit too dark. So we'll go back up brighter, get some more blues in there. Okay, that looks all right. And just as it's a viewport, we don't need to get too far on it. I'm just gonna increase the segments, make it a bit cleaner. Okay, that looks good. And even if you wanted to, you could put some reflection on there just to help sell it a bit better, more watery like. Okay, so that's looking good. Now, if we wanted to have an object in here that's interacting, making a map that works with the phone map, what we can do is let's just grab a sphere and we'll make this our object. Let's just give it a quick material so that we can see it better. So we'll use a nice orange, put that in the luminance, drop that down a bit. And we'll put that on our sphere. We want our sphere to generate a map as well. So we're going to go to X Particles, Utilities, XP Vertex Map, and we're going to set the ocean as the object. And the first layer that is always added is a polygons layer. And that's perfect. What we want to do is we want to drop our sphere into the polygons layer list. Now, if we select this map, you can see we've created this map that is a interactive vertex map. So we want this to blend with our foam map. So we can do that quite easily. If we go back to the vertex map and we add a new layer, and we're going to use the seed map as the layer, and I'm going to put this one down. And the seed layer, we're going to change it from a nearest vertex map to clone and that's looking for another map to clone on so we're going to change the vertex map to use to linked so it's looking for a map to link to so we're going to drop in our phone map so if we select our vertex map and the polygon layer and we're going to change the blend mode to screen you can see we're now blending those two maps together that's getting somewhere. Next thing we want to do is with the polygon map, instead of using screen, we're going to actually use fade and add. And what that does is if we move our object, you'll see that we get this trail happening. So that means we can get a trail system happening like a boat wake. Let's go back into the vertex map and we'll leave everything else as default. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make a quick noise. So we're gonna new material, noise. Let's change this to a wavy turbulence, put some contrast in there and drop the size down to about 20. Let's put this material just on the vertex map maker. It doesn't need to be used anywhere, but we're gonna reference it. So on the vertex map maker, we're gonna add a new layer and this layer is going to be a texture layer. With the texture layer selected, we're going to change the first tag on the object to selected tag, and we'll drop in our texture tag. Now, let's go back, and you can see it's added the map, and the map's now on top of everything else. So we're going to go in with the texture, and we're going to set this blend mode to min. And now you can see that the texture map is blending in with the foam map and the polygon map. Let's get some motion in there. So we'll add a simple simple vibrate tag. Set this to move on the X and Z axes. Amplitude of, we'll leave it at two for now. Select our map, push play. So now you can see we've got the phone map happening and a wake map from our object. And let's just tweak the scale of this noise. It's not working so well, so great. So we'll just make that a bit bigger. So it's not so 
obvious and we'll also animate it so let's set the animation speed to one and then what we can do is with our original material on the surface we can go back in here in the colorizer the vertex map and instead of using the foam map we're going to use the vertex map that we generated so vertex map source and you can see that then adds it to the viewport Just push play so you can see we have an interactive vertex map generated on the surface of our object everything's animating everything's in real time we've got noises we've got different layers all procedurally set up everything's live you can go back and adjust anything as you need working with the new XP Ocean